Welcome Aquarius, hello, welcome to Echo Catcher Tierra, welcome Cross Watchers. This is going to be a reading for May 1st to May 7, 2020. Thank you to all my subscribers, I reached 800 before May and that makes me really, really happy. Uh, so please remember there's no way this can connect with every single Aquarius out there. So I read the cards and you decide if it applies to your situation. So the challenge for your birth chart for the month of May, Aquarius, was for you to go on your birth chart and find your north node. You have a north node and a south node in your birth chart. So find your north node and see what house it is in and then Google that house and that sign and see, read up about it and see how that compares to you as well as the other things hopefully you've journaled about your birth chart. So that's one thing that you should do for your challenge on your birth chart for the month of May is find your north node on your birth chart and read about that, study that or whatever just read about it. Okay so there's a full moon also on the 7th if you need to charge your crystals that would be the good time to do that again and I think I said last time put them in a plant and a windowsill would be good so they're touching earth but they get the mood light to charge them so I'm going to start with the Whispers of the Ocean Oracle cards for you first, Aquarius. And the first one we have for you is 27, Push to Surface. You may have become complacent, you might be stalling, or in need of a new surge of energy. Become aware of the dynamics of your life. Oh, sorry. I guess I turned it around. So this is what it says. You are being gently urged to get back on track. You have become distracted by day-to-day -day activities or are spending too much time daydreaming. It is time to admit that you are not staying on task. Commit to yourself by returning to what you love doing. Get out a calendar and give yourself a deadline. There is a new energy being pushed in your direction. This could indicate a new chapter phase is imminent. The incredible complexity of the mating song suggests that humpbacks are highly intelligent. The number of humpback whales in our oceans is dwindling and they are considered an endangered species. About a half hour after they are born, they do their first push to the surface and they can swim on their own. Wow. So push to the surface. You have something at the surface waiting for you that will make you happy and that's what you need to do. So next you have 37, look beyond the surface. So these both said surface, oh my gosh. Avoid becoming distracted by surface issues. Focus on the underlying motivation, cause or beauty in a situation. Seek ways to bring depth to your, depth to your world. So 27 and 37, push to surface and look beyond the surface. Wow, what is the cryptic message for you guys here? Allow your senses to become aware of the perfection that surrounds you. Allure exists in all aspects of your life, in nature, in relationships, in your own being. If you're missing it, assess what you have been focusing your attention on and look for the beauty in your life instead. If you look, you are sure to find it. Get in touch with your sensuality through sight, smell, taste, and touch. It is time to treat yourself to a day of self-care. At first sight, it may appear whales have warts covering their faces, bodies, and tails. But the bumps on a humpback whale snout are tubercles, and their bodies become home to sea barnacles. Sea barnacles find locations in the ocean from the shore side to the deep ocean to attach. The appearance of barnacles does not diminish the majesty, the majesty or beauty of the whales. In fact, it gives the whales' bodies an interesting detail. So push to surface and look beyond the surface. And then here's the last one of the whispers of the ocean oracle. Number two, diving to new depths. There is a deeper meaning to what is happening. You might be looking at this from the surface and missing what is really going on. Take a moment to pause and breathe. Allow yourself to dive into deeper what it is you are feeling about your current situation. Number two. So that's pretty heavy. 
Because when you go back down, you're dealing with emotions, I feel, when you go dive back down. So let me see how I find it here. So it says, you are being asked to make a deeper connection with yourself. Something in your life needs attention, meditation, or a solution. Pay attention to your inner voice to get in touch with your personal truths, to know the wisdom and understand the heartbeat of the universe. You might be asked to embrace the unknown. It's a natural to form an initial view of a challenge or situation. You do this instinctively without any awareness. However, your first impression may limit your problem-solving ability if you do not go beyond it. If you continue to address this situation from your current viewpoint, you will see nothing new. Try stepping back and seeing things differently or from a different angle. A new perspective will present itself. On a deeper emotional level, the spontaneous actions you have chosen may have caused you to feel unrest in your daily life. Sperm whales dive the deepest of all the whales. They have been recorded at depths greater than 3,200 meters and can remain underwater for a bit longer than an hour. Sperm whales signify emotional depths and the connection between your thoughts and your emotional choices. You are being asked to dig a bit deeper into a situation. And these all have whales. These are all the whales. Wow, that's crazy. So yeah, hopefully, you know, when I go back and watch this, I'll make a whole lot of connections and a lot more things will come to me, but it's usually on my second when I review it. And by then the video is already done, so. Okay, I'm switching to the chakra, I mean to the chakra, to the Mystical Cats Tarot deck now. So the first card we have for you is Sea Queen. Sea Queen is somebody that could mentor you or give you advice. Somebody you feel is well balanced. This could be you, I guess, Aquarius. But I feel like it's somebody around you who is well balanced and mentors you. Five of Sky is you feeling like you have to defend yourself. People are coming at you. Is it because you have a mentor? Or you go to counseling? Oh, this is your card. This is beautiful. This is you, Aquarius. In this deck, it also could represent a Leo to me because the lion and the stars. But in traditional tarot, it represents you, Aquarius. So this is wish fulfillment. Dream coming towards you. This is nice. And this is Leo again, too. So, I don't know if you have birth chart placement of Leo or somebody around you a Leo, but this is Leo again, but this is strength for you, which is good. Ooh, and this could represent a Pisces around you, and this is somebody's dark side coming forth, a secret being exposed, something that's been kept in the dark, so to speak, is coming to light. And we have a full moon on the 7th, remember. Somebody's been manifesting what they want their life to be like. And we have the power to bring to us what we want in our life. We have to believe, we have to put it out there. And you have to be able to learn how to deflect negative energies and naysayers and go on your own path and do what you, what your inner voice and your heart and head tell you to do. And that's how you, you know, live an honest, good life. But obviously, there's reasons why you have to think of others. But basically, so let's keep going. So then you have Sky Tom. Is somebody being rude right in front of your face? They're just being blatantly not nice. Eight of Earth is you teaching other people a skill. You're really good at your job or your career and you train other people to do what you do. And they respect you, the people you train to do it. This could represent somebody younger than you coming in to to be in your life for a little while. Like it could be a pet, um, a relative moving near you, something like that. The floating cat. So for some reason you can't decide about something. And this is usually my yes card. But all I can tell you is what does your inner voice say 
Aquarius. What does your inner voice tell you? You have to just sit quietly, nothing going on around you. Maybe listen to a good song before you get ready to meditate that you like to relax you and then meditate. And the answer will come to you. Ten of Earth is somebody being generous to somebody. Somebody's letting somebody stay in their home or vice versa. Ace of Sky. Ace of Sky is somebody's done. They're done. They're not doing anything anymore. Totally done with something. Cutting something out. Nine of Fire Addiction. This is somebody trying to stay sober or somebody trying to get sober again. But this is addiction. You see the columns in this car that represents a divine guiding you and trying to hold you at a perimeter and guide you to where you need to go to get back on track. So it makes me think of all these. Push to the surface. Look beyond the surface. Dive into new depths. If you're dealing with addiction, that might make a lot of sense. And there's a lot of emotion. These are all throat chakra. The blue. Yeah, it's a throat chakra. That's, uh. So I'm going to switch to the, throat, to the chakra wisdom deck now. And you have temperance. So this is waiting for the universe to balance things out. Things are going the way they're supposed to. Somebody is reflecting on a past relationship that didn't work out and they're sorrowful about it. They feel sad about it. And when you feel regret about past relationships, you feel, live in the moment, feel those feelings, write it down on paper if you have to, pros and cons, release it, and move on. Do not linger in those kind of energies too long. Like... A month is too long, two months is too long, a year is too long. If you're reflecting on a relationship that long ago, you're really getting stuck. It's okay to love somebody like that that much and still love them, but to reflect on it still is not helping you move on. So you just got to keep doing things to help you move on is what I'm getting from that. Queen of Cups. So this is honesty, love, intuition, somebody offering honest advice because they love you, they care about you. It could be just a friend, could be a love. So you're fearful of feeling vulnerable, Aquarius, so you're putting your guard up. You're like, oh, oh, I don't like how I'm feeling. I, I talk too much. I gave too much information about myself, so now I've got to protect myself, put the walls up, and forget what I even said to that person. To a cop, so somebody adores somebody, somebody admires somebody, they think they're handsome, somebody thinks somebody's beautiful. Maybe you both feel the same way about each other. So don't put your guard up. And that's your sacral chakra. Ah. So you're the one that's very attracted. Another throat chakra, this is the moon, yin and yang, balancing out. So something in the light is coming forward. And you had the moon card over here, so you've had it twice. This is double confirmation. Something that has been hidden is getting ready to come out into the present. Eight of Swords is self-blame, sabotage. And don't stay in that energy too long. Why? What is going on? Four of Swords. So here's you overthinking something around love. And if you continue to stay in this energy, you're going to wear yourself out. You need to take a step back, which I think one of those cards said that, to take a step back. And this would kind of mean the same thing. You're going to overthink something. You're going to wear yourself out mentally and physically. You're going to unground yourself. That's weird. I think there was two cards under there. Ten of Cups. This is harmony in a relationship and love and balance and peace and happiness. That's nice. So you're putting too much into it. If you let it go, everything will be fine. The Tower is when something has to fall apart so it can rebuild itself. The foundation is not good. It's built on a house of cards, so to speak. So it has to fall apart to rebuild. 
Two of Coins is flexibility and compromise. You have to be flexible and compromise to move forward from the tower. Don't stay stuck in that too long either. You have a lot of different energies and feelings and yeah, a lot in this reading. So King of Coins. King of Coins is somebody coming in to offer something. And I feel like it could be love. And it could be long-term love. Stability. Three of Coins. This is growth and promotion. So some of you are doing really good with the Coins, Aquarius, after this Tower moment. The Three of Cups is peace and harmony in your home life. So yeah, if you're having money issues, it looks like you're going to have a tower moment, a secret's going to come forward, and then your money issues are going to turn around. Everything's going to turn around. That's nice. So I am going to pull the Soul's Journey lesson cards for you now. And the first one is guilt. I release any belief that no longer assist in my soul's growth. Guilt, that's pretty heavy. So let me see if there's anything that sticks out in there that maybe you could use. The energy of fear has many guises to complicate your path to loving yourself. Guilt is the most devious because it is a wolf in sheep's clothing. It is a self-imposed emotion that pretends to be instructive and enlightening. Guilt can help us grow when we realize that our actions have been hurtful to others and that we need to make amends. After we do so, though, it's time to learn from the behavior and move on. The problem arises when we hold on to a guilty feeling that serves no purpose other than promoting self-destructiveness and low self-esteem. No one is perfect. Everyone makes mistakes. Guilt is not always rational, but if you examine it subjectively, act on it, and release it, it becomes temporary emotion. Long-held guilty feelings are never good, and it will create a setback a roadblock to self-love and happiness. You must continually scan your current emotions for any guilty feelings and bring them to the surface for analysis. Healthy guilt is a warning that action should be taken. Irrational guilt needs to be released. That is really powerful, guilt. So if you're fighting addiction too, don't, don't let guilt make you fall back in. Or the depression... So the next one for you is balance. I bring a state of perfect harmony into my world and I do so without judgment. This is the throat chakra and the heart chakra. So that would be balance and purple. Nice. It looks like the lotus flower in the middle and that is beautiful. So let me find balance, see what it says there. Oh, I'm so close. Gosh, I get to it and then I have to go back. Oh, I found it. Okay. Balance means bringing a sense of stability and wholeness into every area of your life. Many times when you look at a situation objectively, you will resonate with one side more than the other. Try not to view either as good or bad, but simply recognize that it is. The true nature of the scales of balance is to give both sides of a situation your equitable, objective perspective. It can be difficult to understand the side that you don't relate to, but that is a lesson in itself. What is it about you that prevents you from giving both sides of the coin your non-judgmental assessment? A situation or person has been placed in your path to teach you that everyone has his or her own unique, authentic life story and you must put yourself in that person's shoes to really understand his or her motivation. Balance is a godly virtue and if it is struck, you will reap the benefits of insight and compassion. Beautiful. So now I'm going to pull the Fantasy Cats Oracle card, and you have rolling. This is beautiful. This is power. So this tells you to exert boundaries. That's how you assert power to others around you. By setting boundaries, like, oh, I can't ask 
Joe will just take me to the store because Joe doesn't drive after 5 o'clock at night. It's too late. Stuff like that that makes you protect yourself to where other people won't take advantage of you, so to speak. And then you have 11, which is watching. This is beautiful. So somebody's watching you or you're watching somebody. And that's another reason why you need to set boundaries. That'll help you. So pay attention because people are out themselves. If somebody's watching you and you talk to them, they'll say something out themselves. You'll be like, oh, oh my gosh, that's, that's, that's who's watching me. I can't believe they just said that and didn't realize they outed themselves. So I'm going to read the fortune that's in my fortune cookie. I have a love fortune in here. Something new I'm adding to the readings on my channel. Thank you to all my subscribers if I didn't already say that. So your fortune cookie says... Give good advice today, and the favor will be returned tomorrow. That's nice. So thank you so much, Aquarius, Crosswatchers, for coming to Echo Catcher Tarot, all my subscribers. Thank you. Bless you.